Hello everyone, this is Christian LaRue from Acromat, and this is part two of a two-part series. If you have not seen part one, that is to say how to model a Rubik's Cube in Blender, you can click the annotation on the screen. Okay, let's get started. So, um, what I've done, first of all, is I've completed all the sides of the cubes. As I've said in part one, if you're only taking a photo, just kind of get done what you need to for the scene, um, with the exception being if you're going to have any reflective surfaces, uh, such as potentially the background, and so... If that's the case, and you want to complete everything, but um, in the case of the the first tutorial, the first example, I didn't really need to to complete those back faces. But for the animation, that's completely different. So I went in and finished that. Okay, so um, I've also made the uh, the background and the lamps invisible because that's going to kind of complicate the animation process, or at least you know we don't need those obstacles in the way. I am going to uh, set up my workspace. For the next step so uh, we need the dope sheet and as well the timeline um, it doesn't matter you know what's where just as long as you can clearly see both and I'll set up my timeline so that we start at zero frame zero and we end uh, let's say <clears throat> 32 because every rotation is going to be about eight frames I found that to be a pretty good um, kind of time segment, time allocation for every uh, segment rotation. Sorry if sometimes like I, I derp uh, when I record, I don't know, I maybe it's the stress of, of trying to do two things at once and sound coherent, but oftentimes I'll just kind of like blank out on words. Anyways, <laughs> let's keep on trucking. Um, you're going to want to go into uh, edit mode for the cube and select everything by hitting A. Now if you hit P, you get the option to uh, separate the entire Rubik's Cube by loose parts. And if you do that, essentially every single little cube that we created earlier on using the array modifier, um, they're all separated. So as you can see right here, we have 27 cubes. That's exactly what we want, because we want to move each cube independently of the others. Make sure uh, that your pivot point is the 3D cursor, and uh, now what we're going to do is select all the Rubik's Cube, if it wasn't already selected, and hit I to create a keyframe and choose lo uh, location rotation, because, um, I mean, that's, that's all we're doing. We're not scaling it. I mean, if you want to do that in your scene, go right ahead, but uh, in this tutorial we're only going to be um, either moving the Rubik's Cube around or rotating the pieces. Nothing more complicated than that. Uh, so, I'm going to go 8 frames forward. Select a side. What you can do is, uh, to kind of make things simple, is go into one of the side views, hit your selection key tool, hit B, and now I've got an entire side selected. Hit R to rotate, and uh, depending on which side you're rotating, I think I need to hit X, there we go, and we're going to be moving um, each side in 90 degree increments, so you can either type in 90 or negative 90, I'll just go with 90 for now. Now once again, I'll select the entire Rubik's Cube and put in another keyframe, so location rotation. So let's move forward to the 16th frame and not the 116th frame and I'll select <clears throat> these cubes now and now I'll rotate along the Y and I'll rotate it negative 90 this time. That sounds good. Select the entire cube hit I and location rotation. What I like to do is just kind of go through the, fl the the frames once in a while just to make sure that everything is animating smoothly because when I first came up with uh, this Rubik's Cube and I was playing around I was ha actually having a lot of problems with the animation for some reason sometimes some of the cubes were buggy and um, they would kind of go through each other so if ever you have that complication just kind of go back a few steps choose another set of cubes to animate and just kind of move forward. I didn't really uh, understand what was causing the problem, but just kind of, you know, choosing different sets of cubes to animate every time uh, just kind of cleared up the issue. So, 
Now select the middle row and not this cube. Oops. See, this is a sign when the program does not want to cooperate. It's selecting cubes that I do not want. Just to make sure that we have the right cube selected, I'll just kind of drag them out. Okay, that's good. And now I will rotate them along the Z axis, about 90 frames, that sounds good. Select everything, hit I once again, location, rotation, and I just want to make sure that everything is smooth, everything seems to be perfectly fine, good. Hit I, location, rotation, and fantastic okay so if we go back to the beginning of the timeline and then we hit play just for a little preview you can see the Rubik's Cube is essentially um, not solving itself but just kind of shuffling randomizing itself if you want to um, do an effect where the Rubik's Cube is solving itself what you can do is essentially just kind of do all these random twists and then once you rendered out your scene and you import it into like After Effects or any other uh, video editor, you can reverse the clip and that way you kind of get the impression that the Rubik's Cube is solving itself. So the uh, last little thing I want to show you guys is let's say you want to move the Rubik's Cube in space. So you can deselect all the little cubes and add an empty. So I'll add some plain, axis, uh, plain axes. And here I'll select every single little cube individually. You can go a little crazy here. Just make sure all the cubes are selected. Okay. And then you want to select your empty last. And by uh, holding Control P, you can set parent to object. And that way, now what you can do is you can animate the empty. I'm just going to kind of deselect these keyframes right here. If you click this little cursor, it's um, only going to show you the dope sheet of uh, whatever element you have selected. And let's say I go to uh, keyframe zero. And if I set a, let's go with a rotation keyframe and I go to 32 and then I tap R twice just to kind of give it a random lo uh, rotation and confirm that and then set another keyframe essentially you can see we got this really wicked effect where the entire cube is pivoting around the center point around the empty and yet the Rubik's Cube is still solving itself and so this is kind of what it looks like here is a little preview of what the finished product could look like. I just kind of messed around, played around with the scene, and had a, a bit of fun. Um, if you'd like to see more of my content, you could click on those annotations on the screen right now. Um, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, please consider giving me a subscription. Thank you guys very, very much. Be sure to leave some comments. I read every single little comment that you guys leave. Whether good or bad, I'm always trying to improve. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.